Oh my goodness. So we got a little bit of a different video for you guys here today. I hope you enjoy it. Before we get started, I wanted to say a big thank you to the Wounded Warrior Project as well as ASUS and the Tough Gaming Alliance for making this video possible. A couple months ago, ASUS got in contact with me and asked if I wanted to be a part of a video series where we build and give computers to wounded warriors who need them. And when I heard that, and I heard the story of Michael Carasquillo, who you will meet in a second, I was, I was down. I said, this is an absolutely worthwhile project. I definitely wanna be a part of it. Let me know how I could help. So what I did was when I got in contact with Michael, find out what, found out what his needs were, what he's gonna be using the system for. I tried to come up with something that I felt would be sufficient for him for years to come. And I think we did that. And I think that his reaction will let you know what he thinks of it too. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a special project. Once again, thank you to ASUS. Thank you to the Tough Gaming Alliance. Thank you to the Wounded Warrior Project. And thank you to Michael for, uh, for participating. Let's go. So my name is Michael Carasquillo. I served in the US Army. I was an airborne infantryman. All right. The red, white, and blue. I like yeah, it. man. Is that a Captain America shield? Captain? Dude, that's <laughs> awesome! Um, I joined the army because when September 11th happened, I was living in New York City. I was a senior in high school. So that was, you know, September was our first month that senior year. And so that was attack on, you know, not just my country, but my city, my home. Oh, wow. And it even got the, uh, it's got my name in it. So yeah, I so I, I, hit up, uh, I hit up my buddies over at uh, V1 Tech. And uh, I was like, look, we got this project coming up um, and um, we got to get, get something special in here. So we, we custom designed that backplate uh, with your name and the Wounded Warrior Project logo and whatnot on there. Oh, crazy. And so I went to uh, uh, infantry school, uh, first basic training that's Fort Benning, Georgia. Infantry school was there as well, so Fort Benning, Georgia. And then Airborne School, which was Fort Benning, Georgia. So I was there for quite a while. And then straight from there, I got orders to go to the 173rd Airborne Brigade, which is in Vicenza, Italy. So I got a overseas assignment right away. And little did I know when I got shipped out to Vicenza, they were preparing for the first combat operation jump since Vietnam. You can bleep it, don't worry about it. Oh man. So let's, uh, let's check it out. I'll tell you yes. what's, what's in it. Yes, uh, yes, let, yes. let me just open that up real quick. Sure. So. Um, obviously, just got the Iron Man decal up front because uh, I know you got a couple of like posters oh, yeah. up your room or whatnot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but so there's a, a Ryzen 7 3700X, uh, so it's 8 core 16 thread, an RTX 2060, uh, 32 gigs of memory, and two terabytes of storage because I know that um, you're going to be editing podcasts and whatnot and maybe some of your comedy sets. So I wanted to make sure you had the capability of, to do that. And then we spruced it up with some. Some cable mod cables, red, white, and blue, and the Captain America shield in there also. So in March of 2003, they jumped into Iraq. It was a, it was a combat operation, we, we airborne assault that just, you know, um, kind of uh, uh, was in Bashir, which was the northern part of Iraq, and that was in March of 2003. From there, we spent 15 months in Iraq, and, and the crazy thing is they told us it was gonna be three weeks. They said, oh, we're gonna drop you in, you're gonna secure the airfields, you're gonna, then you're gonna return home. We just need that quick assault. We're gonna bring in planes and they'll re relieve you. Um, next thing you know, 15 months later, you're still in Iraq and, and finally going home. A year later in 2005, we were deployed to Afghanistan. Now they told us right off the bat for that deployment that in 2005, they said, well, we're gonna be going for a year. Like that's, it's just, it is what it is. We're going, we'll come back in a year. And so I made it six months through that deployment um, when we were doing a mission, it was an air assault mission, we were coming in in helicopters looking for bad guys and um, we've been doing it for a while and, and the bad guys kind of figured it out and set up an ambush and so on this day as soon as we came in as soon as we hit the ground they lit us up they had the high ground and um, two it was another another guy got hit first and so I was kind of in a position where I was the only one that kind of saw that he got injured and so I in that moment realized if I don't get to him and get him help that uh, it could be a lot worse and so I ran out and in the process of getting to him I was shot twice 
and I was shot through my, my left bicep and, and through my right shoulder and then was able to kind of get to him, bring him back to safety. Um, and then while trying to continue on the mission, uh, not realizing I'd actually been shot because, you know, adrenaline and things, um, it was then that uh, I got shot three more times and that kind of uh, knocked me out. I mean, I'm guessing the shield's not a, a computer part. I mean, I'm guessing that's not part of it. I'm not going to tell you it's not going to increase your frame rate. <laughs> it, it might. It might. Right. It blocks uh, uh, viruses and things like that, right? They do yeah, it just deflects them back. <laughs> yeah. When I got to Walter Reed in, in Washington, D.C., um, you know, I was pretty bad. I was in critical condition. Um, and over the course of the next two years I spent in Walter Reed, I had about 40... 40, 50 some surgeries. It was an extensive treatment. It was an extensive uh, recovery period. There were so many guys getting injured at this time and, they, and the hospitals were flooded and they just kind of had to like <laughs> get rid of as many people as they could at the time. And um, you know, the services are much better now, but at the time in 2007 were, you know, it's like, hey, are you healthy enough? Good, you're good luck. And you know, you're gonna get a, a disability check and you're good. And so. Here I am, 22, 23 years old, and I'm like, oh, I'm a disabled veteran, and yeah. I'm gonna go live off of, you know, retirement and disability. Um, and so the next couple of years were a little, a little sketchy. So somehow, some way, some sort of way, they got my information, and they would like call me on my birthday, hey, you know, do you need anything? Are you okay? Is everything good? And I was the guy at the time that's like, no, I'm fine, I'm good, you know, nothing's wrong, and and so didn't even realize kind of what was going on physically, but also mentally, you know, there's a big thing about, um, you know, combat stress and, and PTSD and things like that. And not realizing that I was, I was suffering or that I was in trouble. It was one of those times where Wounded Warrior Project reached out to me and they said, Hey, you know, you know, we see in the, one of those, the questionnaires you put that, you know, you're a football fan. I'm like, well, what team do you like? And I was like, yeah, I'm a Giants fan. I've always been a Giants fan since I was a kid. And they're like, well, you know, you're in Pennsylvania. You're only about two hours from Giants. You, we have a, a, a suite if you want to come check out the game. And I was like, oh, well, I don't like going out, but I'll go out and check out, you know, get sweet tickets so or there's going to be food. And, and you know, okay, all right, I'll check this out. And so that kind of got me out. And in that process, that's their way of kind of getting people out of the house, doing something different, being around other warriors. You know, it's, it's, it's to, to refill that kind of camaraderie that you lose in the service. People that have experienced something similar. Exactly. That you talk to exactly did and you did you find gaming through them or did you find that on your own and it just kind of helped you that's a great question um so with gaming gaming's been a part of my life my whole life so i remember like the original nes like i i would be playing with my cousins they had it and uh, sit there and watch and then little by little start to play and i think the first console that was mine was the n64 because we had an nes in our in our in our kind of family household and then we had a super nintendo um, but it was kind of shared, so my first own console was the Nintendo 64, and but I, I would always, you know, we'd go to a friend's house, play Sega, and it was just such a big part of my childhood and growing up, I loved it. Um, and so even in the military, when I was in the military, you know, this is before really online gaming was a thing, but we used to do LAN parties in the barracks. You'd have, we'd be playing Halo, 64 player Halo, and cables running through the barracks and out the awesome. windows and going to the second floor and you know doing these massive land parties um so it's always been a part of my life and so when i kind of went through that rough patch i kind of retreated into gaming and it, it, it was a it was a comforting thing but almost to a, a dangerous level where i was retreating into myself I'd, I'd be gaming eight hours and not talking to anybody um and it was finding through wounded war project all of a sudden meeting these guys and going, oh yeah, you know, I play Call of Duty, but what's your, you know, what's your gamer tag? And now linking up with others, kind of drawing me out of the single player side of it into the multiplayer world and helping me kind of cope and have someone to talk to and, and share experiences. And then that's when gaming kind of went back to the positive side. And, yeah. um, it and it, communities it and really did. Connections. So in spending time with other guys and, you know, we started, we started doing our own little uh, uh, Minecraft, you know, communities and where we'd all have things and um, really started making me more social. And so I started uh, spending time with more guys and, and, and talking to more guys and opening up. And I found uh, Wounded War Project has a support group. And so it's, it's a peer support group that lets you spend time with other veterans, kind of a, a place to just talk and share experience, share, you know, what's what's going on in your life and share resources. 
And so in that meeting, one guy talked about, hey man, I heard about this program that um, provides uh, all types of art, art um, classes. It's called ASAP, Armed Services Arts Partnership. And it provides um, storytelling, creative writing, actual, you know, like glass blowing and all these different artistic forms. But one of the classes that they do is called Comedy Boot Camp. And now I've always been a fan of comedy. I love comedy movies. That's my favorite genre. I love comedy shows. And so, and I love stand up comedy especially. Never once did I think that would be something that I would be personally interested in doing. But in this group setting, you know, I'm like, you know, things are going well and I'm. I'm challenging myself to push myself out of my comfort zone and really trying to, um, you know, uh, flex my muscles, so to speak, and, and, and you know, work on my, my, my speech giving and my talking. And, you know, like I said, just really just challenge yourself to put yourself outside that bubble. And so uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to sign up and, and, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Really, I just get ridiculed and <laughs> destroyed publicly, you know, the usual. Yeah, the usual. Um, like and so, friend. yeah, just a typical day. I mean, nothing, you can't get hazed worse than you were in the military. Oh, nothing enough. you can. Um, so I really, I was like, you know what? I'm all in. Let me, I signed up. I got selected for one of the classes and I fell in love with it. It's a six week course that you, you work on, you know, what is funny? What do you find funny? How do you structure a joke? How do you, you know, how do you make storytelling? How do you, you know, what's your style? And it really, you know, they don't write the jokes for you or anything like that. It's just, they help you kind of bring out what's inside of you and, and make it funny. For the people that enjoy it and love it and want to stay in the community, they really have a lot of other opportunities to do. Uh, they'll do like one-off shows. They'll do other uh, creative writing stuff. They'll do um, a lot of the, the alumni, so to speak, will go off and do their own shows where we'll invite each other to do shows. And um, some guys do podcasts, some guys do creative writing afterwards. And so it's, it's, a, it's a great way to, you know, showcase what us as veterans, you know, are, are, um, can bring to the table. Um, and so it's been a, it's been a joy, man. I've, I've had great opportunities to, you know, perform in some of the best locations, in, you know, on the East Coast. I've, I've done the DC Improv, the Gotham in, in New York City. And um, I even got to perform for Jimmy Carter. Uh, he, uh, former President Jimmy Carter, had a, a big gala and they invited a couple of us to come out and perform. It was very weird because I don't usually perform in like, you know, a dress shirt and tie and at this fancy, you know, gala. Um, but, you know, when they ask you to do it, you don't say no. So Did you make um, him laugh? he laughed a lot, actually. He laughed a lot. He actually came up to me afterwards, shook my hand and told me I did such a great job. And it was really cool to have that moment with him. And um, yeah, something I'll, I'll never forget. Through comedy, I got invited to be on this show. Uh, it, it's, it was um, it's a radio station, internet radio station called WTF Nation Radio. And it kind of spawned off of the WTF Army Moments, which was a Facebook group that just shared ridiculous Army stories. Um, and it got, became so popular that they spawned off kind of this whole station of, of radio talk shows. And so they had heard about my story and heard about the comedy and asked me to come on as a guest. I did it. I had such a great time. We're laughing. We're t swapping stories. And it was just so much fun that a year later, they actually asked me to come back on. And I said, okay, yeah, round two, let's do this. And so again, swapping stories having a blast and and through the interview they're like well why don't why don't you why don't you come do this with us you're great you like you can speak you're funny you know you have insight and, and all these different things and like if you're ever interested we'd love to have you bring a show together for the for the station and um i kind of laughed it off at first but the more i thought about it i said this is again an opportunity to you know widen my bubble and, and strengthen that muscle of, of getting out there and, and being you know available to people and sharing my opinions and so, um, yeah, so we've been working kind of behind the scenes for a while to put together a little entertainment show, something that talks about nerd stuff. I'm a big nerd, man. I love comic books. I love video games. I love movies. And so this is going to be a, a show that talks about everything, you know, what's going on with Marvel and DC and movies and entertainment and talking about shows and just, just giving a ton of love to, you know, there's a lot of politics shows out there. There's a lot of, you know, negative stuff out there. I just want to talk about what makes me happy. And I want to share that with other people. And I want to talk about all the fun stuff. You know, let's talk about Le the, the biggest Lego creation you've ever made and things like that. That's just fun. Um, and so, you know, this this having this computer is going to make my life a lot easier because it's going to multi-purpose for my gaming, for, for working in my comedy videos, and now also being able to do a live 
internet radio show that then becomes a podcast the day after. So what do you what do you think of the system? Oh man, I, I'm I'm eyeballing it out the side of the corner of my eye. It's lit up and I can see it. Um, it it's gorgeous. It's better than anything I could have imagined. Um, like I said, I, I try to sneaky kind of stalk you online and you know see the other stuff you've built and everything. And I'm like, I knew it was gonna be awesome. I knew it was gonna be awesome. Um, but you know, when we talked about the things that I'm into, uh, even I was thinking to myself, I don't know how I would build something that accurately reflects what I'm into. Um, and I think you nailed it, man. The, the patriotic colors, the Captain America, um, it just, it really just screams kind of like everything I'm all about. So, um, I yeah, I, I love it. And like, I can't wait to start using it really and showing it off, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, well, Michael, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you, and I hope that you get a lot of use out of that computer. Absolutely. All right. Appreciate it. See, we're all done, kitty.